Hey guys, it's been a while since I made a, a video. Um, it's been kind of busy lately. I've actually been wanting to do this video for a while now. Um, it's been over a year since my last helmet video, so things have changed quite a bit. Um, just been kind of busy, you know how it is. But anyways, uh, as you can see, my helmet collection's grown since my first video. Looks like it's been about a year or a little more. Um, uh, I already knew quite a bit about these helmets, but believe it or not, I learned quite a bit um, as I was getting ready for this video. I've been looking at books and researching stuff on the internet, getting more familiar with what I exactly have here. But um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. This one up here is what I thought was World War II um, British. Um, come to find out, it is not. This is... Um, a post World War II, it's actually a Dutch fire helmet, like a fireman helmet. It's got this uh, black leather neck protector thing, which I thought may have been having to do with protecting them from the sun or something, but it's actually to protect them from embers or debris or different stuff when they're fighting fires. I know it's kind of random, I couldn't believe it myself, but like I said, I looked up the stampings and researched it and it's um it's actually Dutch and um so I am a little disappointed because I thought it was World War II British uh, maybe North African maybe this was protecting them from the the heat I know just had to say that but yeah that's uh it's actually Dutch and it's actually a um, civil defense actually but um Still a cool helmet, you know, even though it's not exactly what I thought it was. I only paid $5 for it in a auction, so it's all good. Moving on here, I got this Medic helmet, which once again I thought was British World War II, but this is actually uh, the same as the first helmet. This one's Dutch. Same model and everything, except for this one's not, uh, you know, Fire Brigade or anything. This one, I guess, would be more... Uh, you know medical related uh, civil defense and supposedly neither one of these helmets were actually uh, used in the military but like I said I'm just going by what some of the stuff I found about them but anyways I only gave five dollars for that one too the same auction uh, moving on here um, I got this uh, nice helmet here uh, insides kind of dry rotted out you know but um, this one actually is a World War II uh, Doughboy helmet. Um, the outside's not too bad, but the inside, it's got half the chin strap and the, the liner's pretty shot. But um, $5 again, same auction as the first two. Moving on here, I got this World War I era uh, Doughboy helmet. Um, it's pretty, pretty pitted and rusty, but... Um, I guess most people would consider this relic condition, but no liner, um, but um, still a nice helmet, you know. I like it. It's one of my first ones. I gave $20 for this one at an antique store. Moving on here, I got this model 1933 uh, Italian helmet. Um, overall in fairly good shape still has the liner and everything it's kind of rough I got this on eBay for um, $14 but um it's kind of cool um, I read that they actually changed the color uh, around 1940 or so to this this type of green color um, but yeah Model 1933, Italian. Um, uh oh. And um, yes, I am in my bathroom. I know it's kind of weird, but I have the best lighting in here out of every room in my whole house because my house is really dark. But um, so I know it's kind of weird, but this is my bathroom. Anyways, moving on. Uh, I got this helmet, which I thought was Russian. Um, it's actually post World War II, and what I was able to find was it's. Um, Czechoslovakian. It's actually kind of a grayish gunmetal color, which I know Russian was more green color during the war, and the liner was a little bit different. Um, this one I looked up model 1953. Um, I paid 30, 
uh, $30 for this one, which I really like it. It's a good solid helmet. It's got a nice liner in there, chin strap. And, um, you know, I, I actually like it. I really do. Moving on, I got this helmet, which a lot of you probably seen. Um, East German helmet, post-World War II. Um, I looked it up and I found there was a model 1956. Um, overall in pretty good shape. It's not my favorite helmet, but you know, it is what it is. It's in the collection. All right, moving on here. I got this uh, Vietnam era helmet with a liner in it, which I got these tags on here. I started writing information down. Um, let's see. Sorry about the camera work. Vietnam era helmet. Um, it's a rear seam. And what's uh, unique about this helmet, let me take the liner out. Maybe you guys can give me some information. I was kind of wondering why this one has three bells. It's got the two on the sides, and then it's got another one in the back. And like I said, it is a rear seam helmet. I've just never seen a helmet with with the third bell back here. Maybe y'all can give me some information on that. Um, as far as this chin strap here, um, I don't know exactly a whole lot about it. Uh, I don't know if it's reproduction or just some random one that was put on there. Um, like I said, if y'all can give me any information, that would be great. Um, the liner here is uh, it's a model 1964. It's dated. It's kind of hard to read. Um, it's made by Marmac. It's dated April 14th, 1969. It's a model 1964. And what's cool about it is you can actually see where it used to have the white MP on it. And then over here on the side, you can barely tell it had a 217, which I looked up, and um, it's the... 217th military police company and they were uh, the 217th was for combat support so I thought that was kind of cool and um, I got this helmet in the same one that I got the other the first three for five dollars I know it's hard to believe but I really did get all four of them five dollars a piece which is a great deal um, moving on here Maybe you guys can help me with this one. I'm not sure if this is World War II or Korea. Um, I'm really not sure. It's rear seam um, swivel bell, which it could be late World War II or, or you know, uh, only in Korea. Um, no chin strap. Um, overall, in pretty good shape. It's got two indentions on there, maybe two bullets nick the helmet that'd be awesome would never know though but um and then it's got this random liner here which i looked up in this liner is going by the markings is called a Schuberth 1950s era so um this helm i mean this liner did not actually come with this helmet i bought them separately um i gave 15 dollars for the helmet and the liner was um, like six or seven bucks so it wasn't bad even though it doesn't actually go with it it does have the nape on it um, but any information y'all can give me on this helmet you know that would help me out World War II Korea you know just let me know moving on here um, I like this helmet a lot I paid 15 bucks for this one this one is a World War II era uh, McCord helmet um, it's a front seam fixed bail and it has the chin strap but no liner um, what's cool about this one is it says USCG 41 United States Coast Guard 1941 I would believe and um, I've never seen one with a helmet with that on there anywhere um, I also saw um, let's see I'm sorry uh, that in 1941, McCord made 323,000 uh, M1 helmets, which if this helmet is really 1941 made for the Coast Guard, then it would have been made somewhere between June of 1941 and October of 1943. So that would be really cool. Like I said, some McCord, really nice helmet. I've actually had a couple offers on this one, but I just don't want to turn it loose, you know. I'm not saying it's really rare, but I've never seen one before. It does have an indention on the top, but it's all good. It's old. Moving on here. Another World War II era McCord helmet. This one's front seam, uh, fixed bail. Um, this one actually has a liner with it, 
which let me see if I can get it out here um here's the helmet first it does have the you know the chin strap um I would think that since it, you know, since it's front seam and uh, fixed bell, it's early World War II, around 1942, 1943. But um, overall, you know, a good helmet, really nice helmet here. And um, I'll show you the liner here. This liner, I looked it up. This is a K-Pack. I guess is how you pronounce it. Um, I gave five dollars for the liner. It didn't come with this helmet originally, but. Overall, it's in fairly good shape. Doesn't have the sweat band, but still a pretty nice liner. And um, this uh, this helmet I actually bought for uh, I believe it was about 20 bucks. I got this helmet for, if I'm not mistaken, um, at an antique store. So finding some pretty good deals. You know, you just gotta be patient and be at the right place at the right time. You know what I mean? Moving on here, I've got another World War II helmet. Um, this one is actually a Schluter, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Schluter. I looked it up, it's got the S stamp, which is a, well you can't really see it, but there's an S stamp on there for the Schluter. Um, this one is a front seam fixed bell also. Um, it does have the, the chin strap. And I was looking, this probably would have been a mid-war uh, helmet. And I looked up, and it should fall between May, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, January of 1943 and September of 1944. Um, I gave $10 for this helmet at a yard sale um, a couple years ago. No liner, but still a really nice helmet. Moving on here, I have another McCord helmet. Um, this one is a front seam, uh, fixed bell also. Um, it's got a part of the chin strap. I don't know what this string thing is, but um, it's kind of rusted on the inside. Um, this probably would have been, you know, early World War II. Um, it's actually got a name in it. I um, can't see it, but it says Mike Lavnius, USMC, United States Marine Corps. Um, I actually got this helmet for free. My wife's grandmother has an antique, used to be an antique shop, but now it's just a, a junk building. It's huge, and it's full of all kind of stuff, which I've already gone through it uh, three times now and got out all the military stuff, which there wasn't a whole lot in there. But uh, she just gave me, you know, whatever I found, and that was in there. Um, moving on here, uh, I like this helmet a lot. I got this at a flea market in Nashville for 40 bucks. Um, and this one, actually the man I bought it from, it was his father-in-law's helmet that he used during the war. Um, let me see if I can get it out of here. I'm sorry about the camera work. One day I'd like to get a camera so I don't have to use the um, camera on my phone, you know. But, excuse me just a second. Okay. See, it's a nice helmet. Overall, the outside looks pretty good. Um, this one is front seam, but it's swivel bell, which I'm guessing, you know, they're in the transition of going from front seam to rear seam. Um, the inside looks pretty good. Um, I would guess this helmet, going by what I found out, would be between October 1943 and September 1944. Um, overall in really good shape. And the liner that did come with it, um, I looked up. And this liner is um, a K-Pack, I guess that's how you pronounce it. And um, overall in really good shape, a little dirty, but doesn't um, doesn't look too bad. Here's the outside of it. Uh, what's awesome is this man was in the Third Army, which I thought was really cool. Um, it also has this other decal here, which I've tried to look up, but some of it scratched off, and I wasn't able to find nothing on it, so maybe y'all could help me out with that. But um, overall, nice helmet uh, with liner and everything and a little bit of a history behind it. I gave 40 bucks for this one, which I feel like is a you know pretty good deal. I'm happy with it. Moving on here, I have uh, this British turtle helmet, as they call it. Um, this is World War II era. Uh, I believe it's called a Mark IV. Um, it's got a nice liner with the, the chin strap here, this uh, kind of stretchy elastic, I guess. but really nice helmet. I got this one on eBay for $29. Um, 
um, which I'm happy with. It's really nice British turtle helmet here. Here's from the front. Uh, next one here. This is, well, I bought this as an unissued Vietnam era helmet, which it looks really good. Um, it's got the chin strap. Overall, it looks really good condition on the outside and the inside looks really good too. Um, I would guess it's probably mid to late 1960s. Um, it's rear seam with swivel bells. It does have the chin strap. Um, and here's the liner that that um, did come with it. This is a Marmac 1964 model. Uh, it's dated April 14th, 1969. Um, overall in pretty good shape for, for it also. I believe it is, you know, original to the helmet. Um, but I guess you don't ever really know. But I said overall really nice. I gave $48 for this one at an antique store. This was one of my first first helmets here a while back or several you know several years ago. Next I got this uh, this helmet here. It's got the the camo cover on it with the band around it. Um, it does have the liner and chin strap. This is Vietnam era. Um, here's the liner here, which I mean it's it's pretty well there. It's kind of dry rotted. The leather has for the sweatband, but um, I looked this up and uh, this um, believe believed to be a 1964 model, another Marmac. This one is dated June 19th, 1964. The other two Vietnam era ones are 1969 dated. This one's 1964 dated, so this would be early, early Vietnam. And um, then you got the helmet here, which um, it's uh, let's see, it would probably date mid to late 60s. Rear same swivel bell. Really nice helmet here. Um, I got this one at an antique store for um, $35, which um, isn't bad. I think it's a good looking helmet. I actually wear it sometimes randomly when I play dress up, which my wife doesn't understand, but she does stuff I don't understand. Anyways, um, next here we got this Kevlar helmet. Um, didn't have a cover for it or anything, but it's actually an older one you know different from what they use nowadays um, this one is is dated 1984 it's a PASGT Kevlar helmet it was made by Devil's Lake Sew Company uh, it's an S2 which would be a small original chin strap um, no sweatband but um, 1984 dated so this was actually made two years before I was born it's kinda of random I was born in 86 but nice helmet um, I gave, let me see what it was, I gave $12 for this helmet at a, um, kind of like a flea market, we call it trade days, out in the woods, people sell stuff like a flea market, but 12 bucks on that one. This one here I got at the same place I got as the last one, uh, I got I paid $8 for this one. Um, this one is also a Kevlar helmet, uh, 1984 as well, made by Devil's Lake Sew Company. Um, and this one's actually a marked L1. It's a large helmet with the camo cover. It's got the chin strap. It's a, like I said, it's a large compared to the small helmet there, but with the cover, both the same year. It's got this random marking on here. I don't know if it's armor or what, but it's a pretty big helmet. It's kind of heavy too. Uh, next right here we got this Desert Storm era um, helmet. Um, actually, I say that this one's actually dated 1985. Uh, you know, it is Kevlar helmet, and it's made by Devil Lake So Company. It has the chocolate chip camo cover. It's marked XS, which would be extra small. Um, I gave 20 bucks for this one. There's the inside of it. It's complete. Um, really nice helmet. A little dirty on the outside, but I don't plan on washing. I'm gonna leave it like it is good helmet and lastly here I know this is kind of a lengthy video the longest one for me but bear with me this one is I got this from a um, an Iraq veteran a marine veteran uh, he was the guy I got it from he was in Iraq for the whole year of 2007 stationed there um, this is actually the helmet that he wore um, 
it's got the original webbing and see there's the Marine Corps emblem on there it's kind of hard to see but it's got all the all the insides all the suspension and straps and everything um, let me see this is a it's a Marine Corps lightweight Kevlar helmet made by Gentex company it has the Marpat I guess that's how you pronounce it uh, cover with the original chin straps and pads it's marked L1 it's a large um, but overall in pretty good condition it's awesome that it has you know a little bit of history with it that I know of you know it's been in Iraq and the guy was uh, you know was active he was on the front lines and he did say he you know he fought the enemy and engaged him and he was wearing this helmet while he did it but anyways really cool helmet um, this one this one is kind of weird uh, I like to barter as well as buy and sell stuff this helmet um, I had a bunch of pocket knives which were given to me over the years none of them were any diamond in the rough not really worth a, a whole lot um, and I sold the lot of pocket knives that I got them all for free for 50 bucks and then I turned around and spent that $50 on this helmet so free pocket knives for 50 bucks and then so it's almost in a way kind of like I got free I gave pocket knives for a helmet even though it was, there was money exchange but anyways let me step back here and uh, just kind of pan all the helmets again um, like I said I don't claim to be an expert but uh, if I might have missed any information or, or said something wrong uh, you know let me know and just comment like subscribe um, let me know if something else like I said I might have missed or um, or just some more input let me know what you think about it you know I'm always watching your videos and commenting a lot of yours um, I think it's really cool to have other friends or you know fellow collectors out there who appreciate this much as as I do it's a lot of history here a lot of different designs and we've come a long way as far as developing these things but anyways all right guys thanks for watching like comment subscribe and I got more videos on the way thanks